It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Got the uh, coral cam up. A few people have thought this is my fish tank, but uh, anything, I wish I had a fish tank like this. Man, there's some crazy looking fish swimming by here. Uh, some sergeant majors. I forget what these are. They look like little grunts of some sort, but forget the names of them. Uh, but this is the live Miami coral cam. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, oh, wow. Pretty blue fish just went by there. And this guy is so colorful here. Uh, I could do a show just on fish, and I know I say that every time, but uh, let's move into what we really need to talk about in my real expertise, which is certainly not fish or uh, fish tanks or coral. Um, gold prices and silver prices, $17.99. Uh, down a tiny bit, not much, but I've got an interesting pattern here that if you've been watching my videos here for the last couple weeks, you'll notice that uh, it's been happening around the same time. I'm going to do a quick refresh here and just see if it's popped up above that 1800 There it is. 1800. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, markets. The uh, low overnight since yesterday's New York close, 1794, popped a little bit below uh, that uh, $1,800 mark last night, uh, and a high of 1808, obviously, I think, which was the close of New York yesterday, thereabouts. And uh, we're currently sitting at that $1,800 level right now, um, down $8 from uh, the high from yesterday, or the high overnight, I'm sorry. Uh, silver, 2434 currently. Uh, in that 2420 to 2460 range, uh, down 25 cents from the overnight high, and uh, platinum just kind of like sitting right where it's at, and that's uh, 1040 to 1060 range. Um, <clears throat> again, it's currently sitting exactly at 1050. Uh, not too much to see here, folks. Good opportunity still to buy at these. You know, as I said, I think anything sub $2,000 on silver is cheap. Anything sub 30 on silver is cheap, in my opinion, and anything sub $1,200 is, is cheap in uh, platinum, in my opinion. I think platinum is really underpriced, but uh, that's a tough market to figure out. Let's take a look at what I was just talking about when this is happening at the times. Look at this. Same time, New York opening. Uh, it, it's <clears throat> all these peaks and valleys, and most of the activity, particularly in New York on precious metals, has all been happening in the morning for between the uh, opening time and uh, about noon time at the latest, but typically opening to about, I don't know, 11 o'clock or something like that, where is most of the activity has taken place, uh, even on the upside. Uh, so on the, again, the vast majority of the, the biggest moves in the last couple of weeks on gold and silver uh, has been in the New York market at uh, 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 like 8 o'clock, you know, the opening 8.20 to about uh, noontime roughly. And you can see the up market yesterday, and uh, take a look here. Uh, where is this? Uh, the blue line would be on Sunday night, uh, continues on Monday right here. Uh, we, we saw, uh, we did see, you did see an uh, up move uh, on uh, gold, about a $5, not too much. But again, a lot of the activity uh, for the last few weeks, oddly enough, has been in the mornings. Uh, it doesn't extend into the afternoons or anything. Let's take a look at silver, the exact same thing. Oop, in the wrong chart there. Let me move over to this silver chart right here. Uh, there's a 24-hour spot silver chart as well. Let me make that a little smaller for you. And again, look at the times. New York, New right around the New York Open, uh, 9.20 or 8.20. Uh, same thing with silver. Look at that. Boom. Uh, right in that time frame. And again, if, you t if you've been watching my videos uh, consistently for the last few weeks, uh, I've been pointing out this little... Uh, trend that I've seen, and don't ask me to explain why, who, what, and, and how. I'm pretty certain it is in the New York uh, NYMEX market because uh, um, I don't believe that's happening in London, uh, tough to say. I mean, uh, no, London's actually, uh, I've got to take a look at the time frame here. God, that's really screwy to me, is trying to figure out the times and which market is opening, which market is causing this. Uh, but I am fairly certain that these, uh, these downs that we're seeing are starting in New York at the opening. Uh, another interesting thing is the, uh, the ratio has tightened up quite a bit, the gold to silver ratio. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, give me one second here, I'll just ask Siri up here to uh, do that math for me. 1800.30 uh, divided by 24.34. And ratio, man, the ratio is kind of coming down a little bit, 73.96, basically 74 to 1. Uh, it's been much higher than that. Uh, recently, not too, not too long ago, and uh, that ratio is kind of tightening up a little bit. Not sure what exactly that means either, but I'm just pointing out these uh, uh, little trends that I'm seeing. And uh, let's, I'm looking at the uh, gold to silver ratio 100-year historical chart. Uh, just kind of point out a couple things. This is a chart that you can look at for free. It's on macro trends. Uh, you can type in gold to silver ratio 100-year historical chart. 
Uh, and the cool thing about this chart, it's got a log scale here. I can turn that log scale off and uh, <coughs> uh, turn the log scale back on. Show recessions, don't show recessions. I like, uh, I mean, you can see, you, you can see on the recessions where uh, the ratios are kind of peaked here. Look at this, 1990. Uh, what's uh, one recession here? What's that? 2008. Oh, the uh, bubble, the big bubble of 08. And uh, here's the uh, current bubble in the making of 2020. Well, I'm not sure what we're going to call this bubble. The bubble of 2020, or the bubble of 2021, or 20, uh, 2022. <laughs> oh, what? Do, what are they actually bubbles? Are they are they considered when they started? No, no. A bubble would be when the bubble burst. So uh, 2008 would have been your your burst bubble there. Uh, I don't think we've had our bubble burst yet here in the uh, greatest bubble of all times, the G-boat. Uh, but no less that uh, that ratio has come down quite a bit. Um, take a look at this, the height of the ratio. Most of you know this. We've gone over this many times. But 2020 at the closures, uh, during the closures, the ratio, I think, on interday level went as high as 120 to 1 or higher. Uh, this macro trends chart is showing 113 uh, to 1 more or less. Uh, but that tightened back, back up quite a bit. Let me do the five-year chart so we can kind of get a feel here for, uh, there's 2020, and take a look at the um, ratio right here. Again, as high as 120 to 1, I think, on the intraday. I did the math myself. That's why I remember 120 to 1. And uh, <clears throat> uh, right there, about 114 to 1. And it's been slowly tightening up throughout the year. I think what this is a result of, this is a result of gold shooting up dramatically in 2020. Silver was lagging behind. If you guys remember, uh, and it's hard not to remember 2020 because there was nothing to do except sit in your house and look at the computer. Uh, so uh, if you remember in 2020, uh, uh, the ratio was quite high, uh, and that was a result of gold shooting up dramatically. Gold went from that, uh, oh man, I forget. I have to look at the gold chart here. but. Uh, gold shot up quite a significantly higher and faster than silver did. Silver lagged behind a little bit. But as you can tell, as uh, uh, silver started to catch up and gold prices started to come down a little bit in 2020, uh, you see that uh, line tightening up. Uh, there's a uh, 68 to 1. I think the 30 year, uh, well, let me take a look at 30 years. All right, I kind of draw an average line here in my head, and I think I've heard it said before. The, uh, the average here is probably in the 65 to 1 ratio over the last 30 years. Now, again, last 30 years, not, not the uh, a longer chart. So um, if we're going to look at the last 30 years as a guideline, 65 to 1 is where it's been. And uh, where are we at right now? Uh, I'd say the average, oh gosh, you couldn't even do an average. The average here, well, I guess you could over the five year, but uh, I'm going to put the average closer to uh, probably the mid 80s low to mid 80 to 1 uh, ratio. Uh, again, after uh, silver started catching up and gold started backing off a little bit, uh, you see that the ratio went down to 68 uh, or 69 to 1 uh, and then kind of back up to uh, where we've uh, been here in this range. What is that? That's uh, 2021. Uh, the ratio kind of tightened up quite a bit there. I'd like to kind of see what happened to the gold. I don't have the chart next, next to me right now, gold and silver, but I'd like to kind of see, did gold come down or silver to go up to get that uh, lower ratio there? I suspect these are probably uh, times where the markets kind of got a little monkey hammered a little bit. Uh, that's probably a monkey hammer time. Um, that's recovering a little bit. That's probably a monkey hammer time. <laughs> and uh, 79 to 1, we were there not too long ago. And again, we're sitting around that, uh, what did I say? 70, 74 to 1 or something like that. Oh gosh, memory sucks. <laughs> uh, let me do it one more time. Sorry about that. I guess I could go back and look, but uh, oh, I'm talking to Siri. One sec. Let's do the ratio. And God, 1800 divided by 24.34. Yeah, 74 to one. Kind of what I said. Gosh, I tell you, my memory's going to hell. Uh, I, I've only had two cups of coffee this morning, though, so far. So <laughs> I'm usually on my third pot by now. And uh, let's take a look at, well, again, ratios are kind of uh, uh, dropping back down a little bit. Now, I said a while back ago that uh, uh, this was probably a result of uh, silver. Well, right now it's a result of silver uh, uh, coming back up from its uh, low 20s. I think gold pretty much seen its monkey hammering at the low 1700s. It's, it's been sitting at that mid-1700s, uh, not doing much for quite some time. Pops up to 18, backs down again. 
Uh, and I believe silver overreacted, uh, and that's probably why you see, uh, 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 well, where's that point right here? September, uh, there you go. Silver kind of got pretty much monkey hammered. But now I believe that silver's coming back up. Uh, that uh, ratio started to go down, but gold's going back up as well. So that'll, that'll keep it on the high side a little bit when these two metals keep moving concurrently uh, at about the same time. So the uh, uh, you know the ratio is going to ratio is going to be about the same here for a little bit. But interesting little thing here that uh, all the uh, biggest price movements uh, in precious metals, gold and silver, uh, don't know about platinum, have been in the morning, New York, uh, 8:20 to about 11 a.m. Uh, where are we going to go from here? A little article I saw, you know, I, I always try to uh, show you different websites to read and make you smarter than the average bear. Uh, this is definitely one of them. I don't read it very often because a lot of it's uh, very in-depth economically and politically. And uh, for me to read an entire article, most of these articles, well, that says reading time, four minutes, so I can get away with that. Uh, but uh, a lot of them are pretty heavy, too, when it comes to economics. But great site. If you can wrap your head around it and you're more than a 30-second uh, soundbite person, you like uh, deep stuff and uh, well-written uh, uh, non-corporate narratives, uh, American Institute for Economic Research is the site for you to read. Uh, what if the great crypto crash is coming? You know, <clears throat> uh, you know, this is going to be construed, and it kind of is, is uh, crypto bashing a little bit. and. Uh, the thing is, is I, I don't have an issue with cryptos per se. I just uh, understand what they really are, which is really nothing. It's just kind of a digital fiat. I mean, come on, folks. The emperor has no clothes here. I mean, I mean, how many times do I have to say this? Um, and, you know, and, and, and the retort you're going to get, well, you know, the dollar, at least it's not like the dollar. There's a limited amount of bitcoins. Well, it is kind of light like the dollar. What do you really own? At least with the dollar, as long as you have the bills, you own a piece of paper you can wipe your ass with. And you know as well as I do, uh, toilet paper is quite a commodity nowadays. So at least you got something. You can't wipe your ass with a bitcoin, that's for damn sure. Uh, but no less, I'm cool with it. It's another market. I'm cool with casinos. I mean, I think casinos should be legal in every state and every uh, county and every, you know, uh, it's a free market, man. People should be able to spend their money however they want to. Uh, you know, if someone wants to turn Bitcoin into money and they want to believe that and they want to do that for themselves, they should be able to legally. So I am a free market capitalist. Now, should you force other people to do it or force other people to believe it's money? No, I don't think so. That's not freedom and that's not freedom of choice and that's not capitalism. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for uh, cryptos. I think as long as they're, they're not purposely used to hurt people uh, and, they're, uh, you know, and it's pretty much an honest market, so to speak, that uh, they should be legal, completely legal, like casinos. If they're honestly run, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or funny, but uh, if they're honestly run and they're not really I won't say hurting people because you can hurt, hurt yourself gambling, but the, the thing is with gambling is, is you, you know you're doing it. You know you, you, you're responsible for yourself. You can't blame anyone else. You know, the, that's the thing with gambling is you can't blame anyone else. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know it, it was rigged. I didn't know it, was, uh, it would go down. I didn't know. Yeah, you knew. Okay, so that's the thing with gambling. That's why I'm cool with it. Uh, you know, it does hurt people. Gambling can hurt people. but. But again, it's a free choice that that person makes. It's the same thing with cryptos. Let me read this. This is, uh, uh, again, four minutes, and uh, we'll get through it real quick. In 1929, Ludwig van Mises rejected a job offer for a higher position at the Austrian bank, uh, Credenstalt. Uh, he believed that a great crash was coming and didn't want his name associated with it. Since then, economists of the Austrian school have successfully managed to avoid association with any economic crash. To prevent association with future crashes, Austrians should now warn about the Bitcoin boom, which has reached new highs in 2021, okay? It's indeed impossible, and absolutely, uh, I agree with this, to deny the success of Bitcoin as an investment. No asset in the world history has appreciated faster than it, apart from perhaps other cryptocurrencies. It boasts a market cap of about 1.1 trillion, with the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies being close to 2.5 trillion. It has created huge fortunes for any early investors and even many latecomers. The scores of economists and pundits who have predicted its imminent collapse have been proved wrong. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, where are we going with this, Brian? Well, let's continue to read here. Uh, with regards to its promise of new money, it has not performed well. It's not money, folks. Uh, apart from El Salvador, where the companies are forced to accept Bitcoin by government decree, there are few places where Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies are accepted in trade. Absolutely true. 
Uh, its high cost and slow speed have not only allowed it to challenge the monies of the world in a meaningful way, some say problems are solved by the Lightning Network, but nevertheless, Bitcoin is very seldom used as a medium of exchange. Bitcoin is now as close to or as far away from being money as it has ever been. Uh, whether its technology improves, there are none, nonetheless uh, three significant reasons grounded in Austrian theory to consider that this might be a boom. All right. Now, the author here is saying that, that this might be a boom, and he's going to provide a couple uh, – there's a question mark here, folks. He's not saying it will crash, for sure. He's not predicting the future. Uh, and speaking of predicting the future, my, uh, my thumbnail yesterday of $3,000 gold in three months was not predicting the future. It was simply quoting an article, okay? So uh, speaking of uh, 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 predicting the future, all right? I just had to get that caveat uh, out of the way. Uh, number two, the market economy benefit – oh, hang on a second. I skipped the number one. He, uh, this gentleman is going to give us uh, three points uh, why we may be a boom in uh, cryptos right now. Number one is credit expansion has fueled the price increases. Absolutely true. Uh, as it has everything else, including gold and silver. Uh, the Austrian theory of business cycle explains that an injection of money through the credit system will make large projects requiring huge amounts of capital and time and seem more economically promising than we really are. After time, it will be clear that these projects are unsustainable, and investment in them will turn out to be have been a waste of uh, resources. Uh, the jury is still out on the substantiality of uh, Bitcoin. Whether it will become money remains to be seen. I don't think so. I think this author kind of made a good point on why above it won't, uh, but let's move along. And all signs point to this happening, um, whether it will become, okay. If indeed it does, in a distant future, it benefits from the credit expansion carried out by central banks all over the world. It is unli un unlikely that an unhampered market where, where time preferences place a discount on projects whose success is far away would have put such a big price, high price on Bitcoin. Hmm. Uh, the mar number two, the market economy benefits the consumer, but Bitcoin has not. While the Austrian economic Ludwig von Mises is the most recognized for the above-mentioned Austrian business cycle theory, or his theorem on the impossibility of calculation under socialism, his general view of the market economy is also highly instructive. I'm going to get a little sip of coffee here, folks. Excuse me. Hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> According to Miss Mises, uh, the uh, market economy is not agreed towards the enrichment of capitalists, but instead the betterment of consumers. This is true. This is a free market capitalism, true free market, not the uh, He's talking about true free market capitalism, folks, not the crony capitalism that the socialists crone on about and, and complain about. That's, that's crony capitalism. When governments in bed or vice versa with business and corporation, that's, and, or their friends or their buddies or regulatory, whatever, that's crony capitalism. This is what we're experiencing today. This is what most socialists can't wrap their heads around because economically they're not very smart. Sorry to say that, but they can't wrap their heads around that what they're experiencing. They, Capitalism has failed. This is a proof of capitalism. No, folks. That's crony capitalism. In fact, it's what socialists actually are pushing for. Corporations to be in bed with government. Look at the mandates, okay? So socialists are actually part of that crony capitalist system, all right? But they don't even realize it. Why? Again, because they don't understand economics. I digress, so let me move along here. Uh, it is the consumers who are the great winners in the market economy as they are showered with high quality products for low prices. This is basic supply and demand factors, folks. When people want stuff, they're willing to pay more for it. Prices generally will go up, uh, generally, all right? Uh, and then when people don't want it, prices generally go down. That's true free market capitalism. Free market capitalism is not that you are forced to do something. And usually the only people that can force you to do something are governments and corporations when they're in bed with each other. The current environment that we're in, run by socialists. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if I'm tough on socialists, uh, it's absolutely true. As good as hearts they may have when it comes to economics, they suck. All right, uh, sorry about that, just had to say that. Uh, but despite Bitcoin history now stretching over 12 years, any great improvements for the masses, with notable exception of dark net markets, are yet to be seen. In addition to transactions being slow and expensive, they are quite complicated to make. Uh, and a little story here, uh, I, I almost got into Bitcoin. It was like three or four dollars or five bucks or something per Bitcoin. I was reading about it. You know, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to tech stuff somewhat. Um, you know, maybe not doing it, but uh, following it in the news. And I remember when Bitcoin out, came out, I said, that's pretty cool. Let me check out. 
it was like five bucks, and I really don't have regrets. I mean, you can always look back and say things, I should have done this. Uh, but I went to find out, and this is a long time ago, it was really cheap then, I went to find out how to buy it. It was so freaking complicated, I said no. I didn't do it. So, <laughs> hey, maybe I do have one regret as I didn't uh, say screw it, the complications. Let me finish this. But, you know, who knew? Who knew? And who does know still to this day, all right? Uh, so, yeah, I would have bought a Bitcoin. I probably would have lost the password knowing me, though. <laughs> uh, definitely, I would have lost the password. I probably would have bought $100 worth of Bitcoin at 5 bucks each. That's kind of, I would have spent 100 bucks at the time on it, I think, if I go back. I don't even know what that would be worth now at 5 bucks a share in Bitcoin. Uh, but again, I couldn't figure it out, man. I went and looked. I wasn't tech savvy enough to figure out how to buy it at the time. So I said, screw it. Um, but like I said, I am certain, just based on the number of passwords I've lost over the years, uh, that I would have lost the passwords. And a single, <laughs> I think he brings it up here, and a single mistake in handling one Bitcoin can be proved fatal. It's estimated that approximately 20% of all existing Bitcoins are lost. Well, there it goes, folks. That's me. I'm part of that 20 percenter because <laughs> uh, I, I would have lost it. I'm pretty certain, but uh, no less. And gosh, can, then I would have been really pissed if I went through all that effort to learn how to get it at the time and I, I bought it and then I lost it years later. I would have been kicking myself, but I never bought it. So, I, you know, no loss there. Um, such an accidental deflation surely increases the price, but is very far from customer friendliness that otherwise character, characterizes the market economy. Absolutely correct here. Nothing easy about Bitcoin, nor will there ever be. Uh, and the f well, again, you know my opinion on it. So let me finish reading the article here. A little another sip here. I'll try not to slurp it in your ear. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, three limited practical uses reduces Bitcoin's chance of becoming money. In the initial years of Bitcoin, there was no debate regarding whether an asset with no industrial use could even become a medium of exchange. As Bitcoin proved this was at least possible, the topic simply dropped from conversation. But we should admit that, uh, that although we now know something with a very limited use can be used as a medium of exchange, and it likely will not be. Uh, Austrian uh, economist Karl Minger uh, provided an elegant explanation of how money emerges from people's trading and striving to acquire goods with higher saleability. In this manner, the emergence of money becomes quite simple, requiring no government intervention or technology, uh, technological, technological brilliance. Okay, I mean, that's important. That's what money needs to be. It can't require uh, government intervention and it can't require technological brilliance. All right, that's a fact. Uh, you know, and, and I was a living proof of that when I couldn't buy uh, uh, $100 worth of Bitcoin at five bucks, <laughs> five bucks a, a Bitcoin. Uh, perfect example of that. I, I didn't have the technological brilliance at the time. And it probably, some of you are going to say, it wasn't any brilliance, but I lack any skill whatsoever. Otherwise, I would have owned it. Uh, and again, probably lost it. Uh, the website uh, bitcoinsdead.org provides a list of people who have predicted the death of Bitcoin. And uh, I've not done that, and uh, I don't really want to do it. I, again, I've made my uh, opinion on what Bitcoin is and where it's going. Uh, governments will eventually take it over and we'll end up in a digital cashless society uh, because young folks don't know any better and they don't see the writing on the wall. And uh, you will have no more economic privacy. Zero, zip, that's it. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, again, I know we still got to read this. Has anyone noticed that the uh, $600 limit uh, uh, that uh, the Congress was trying to uh, uh, make sure that people had to report anything over $600 the banks did in your bank account? Uh, they raised it at $10,000, uh, but I think that's per year and everyone's still screwed. Uh, but I digress again. Uh, it is possible that warning hindsight will seem wrong as the earlier ones, yet it should be noted that most of the earliest criticism was aimed at irrelevant matters such as Bitcoin being used by criminals. Instead, the problem is rather that after 12 long years, Bitcoin is not used by many more than criminals if they still even use it. Were the world to experience a new economic downturn, there is a great possibility that this lack of consumer use will show the current valuation of Bitcoin to have been a bubble. If this happens, a lot of retail investors will suffer, unlike most other crashes. This time there'll be no bailouts. The result could be bitterness and hostility in the years following the crash. Well, that's what follows uh, uh, crashes, is bitterness and hostility. And why do you think after the 2008 crash, the, uh, uh, this, this, uh, they, bailed, they sent you a pittance of 1,600 or 1,400 or 1,200 you know, uh, of, of dollars of uh, federal money? Why did they do that? 
because in 2008 they bailed out their buddies, all right? Uh, they, and they, they almost got tarred and feathered for that. If they did that again, they, without giving uh, uh, the average working Joe uh, a payoff of whatever, you know, a thousand bucks, twelve, fourteen hundred, uh, we, they definitely would have tarred and feathered them in 2020. And this is why you see money going directly into people's bank accounts. It's a payoff, folks. It's a payoff to prevent you from going up and tar and feathering uh, uh, politicians. It's also a payoff to get you to vote for them. Uh, but hey, I digress. For the fourth time in this article, and I'm going to say, what if a great crypto crash is coming? I think it's possible. Good article to read. Recommend that you put uh, uh, American uh, Institute for Economic Research on your uh, bookmark bar. I think it's actually, man, it's a brilliant, brilliant site, uh, making you much smarter than the average bearer, actually, if you read this stuff. All value is subjective, and that's a good thing. Uh, that looks like something I definitely am going to read later on today. Well, let's move on to ZH and see what's going on with ZH. Not too much. Uh, VBL did his uh, video on gold market rundown. Um, we talked about how silver can move 50 cents. Uh, again, I don't watch a lot of videos, but I like reading some of the stuff that he writes. And uh, uh, what else is going on here? Doing 90 miles per hour on a dead man's curve, a few thoughts on risk. Here's another guy that I read frequently. This is uh, Charles Hugh Smith of uh, Two Minds Blog. Uh, I like this guy's stuff. He kind of says it just like it, it is. And uh, he's, he's basically talking about the stock market where we're currently at. And, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs predicted a melt up this week. And basically, that's what we got. You got the stock markets melting up, going up higher. Uh, and then you've got, uh, uh, what else? Uh, the, the Fed is uh, pumping this market up higher and higher. At what point does this bubble just burst, folks? I mean, it's massive at this point. It's massive. Uh, I mean, is, are they going to be able to control it? Like, you know, you know, like with a balloon, or is it going to be just like a pin prick and pop, it's going to go one, one event or one type black swan, boom. The whole greatest bubble of all time blows up and the economic, uh, the world turns to shit economically. Is that the way it's going to happen? Or did they learn from their lesson in 2008 and are going to be able to slowly let the air out of this bubble? Um, I don't know. I think that's what China's trying to do with Evergrande. Uh, let's see how successful they are at it. But uh, uh, it doesn't take much for the, the things just to pop. Uh, uh, however, on the other hand, never underestimate the people that can print money, too. So uh, let's move along and see what's going on. Not too much. I can talk about some political stuff here and some economic stuff. Um, this is kind of an interesting article, and it's very true. Uh, what, is, what sadness that is, dysmorphia. Uh, but let's move along. Uh, Tesla and Hertz. Uh, interesting. Tesla kind of went way up. He, I guess he got into the trillion dollar club, uh, apparently. I found it really amazing that Tesla is worth more than Toyota now. Really? Toyota's been making profits for years and years and years. Tesla just in the last couple of years started making a profit. Um, and uh, I, I'm not bad. I, I think Tesla's uh, uh, cars are cool. I like, I won't say love, I like Elon Musk. I think he is a character. Uh, and a salesman, the the uh, the P. T. Barnum of <laughs> the P. T. Barnum of the uh, billionaires club. You know what I'm saying? As far as that company goes, he is the uh, you know he's a showman for sure, and uh, that's kind of the way I look at him. Uh, and you know what? I'm a space junkie. I love space stuff. I grew up in that environment. I watched the first man walk on the moon. So uh, um, you know the fact that he's out there, uh, sh you know, shooting rocket ships up at NASA, uh, it doesn't hurt, <laughs> as far as my opinion goes of them. But no less, Tesla really, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's a, a bizarre world, folks, even when it comes to Tesla, because he hasn't made money. The last couple of years, he was selling his carbon credits to make a profit. Uh, the last two or three years, it's car, you know, the carbon uh, credits that he has. That's what he sold to make a profit, to make the company profitable. It hasn't been profitable ever, really. Uh, and now it's in the trillion dollar club. Uh, but again, got to hand it to him, he put the, uh, he put, uh, electric cars on the map, man. He, he made every other car maker stop and take a look and, and change their entire, entire uh, setups, man. He, he did change the world when it comes to electric cars. You've got to hand it to him on that. But really, is the stock worth that? I don't think so, man. That's a bizarre world there. Um, and again, you can criticize someone even if you like them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I like the guy, but still, I see a lot of things to criticize there. Uh, future surged all-time highs, earnings supercharged. Mel again, we are in freaking bizarro world, folks. <laughs> uh, the markets just keep flying up. This is the greatest bubble of all time. Charles Hughes Smith said that, the, the gentleman that I was uh, talking about, the articles I like to read. Uh, he wrote this one right here. Uh, again, uh, he, he called it the greatest bubble of all time. I have to agree with him. This is the greatest bubble of all time. 
And I'm kind of curious how this all works out. Uh, I think though, if, you know, owning precious metals, obviously owning gold and silver, uh, I believe that is your wealth insurance, folks. That's your insurance against going completely bankrupt and, and uh, uh, having every asset you own just take a shit. And let's move along here. Transitory shortages are inflation or actually your quality of life being stolen right before your eyes. God, this is why I like zero. You don't read this stuff in corporate news. You don't read this stuff on uh, uh, the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal or Bloomberg's. They suck, actually, in my opinion. Uh, the corporate mainstream narrative. Where do you read trend, or actually your quality of life being stolen? This is true. This is true. How come I can't read articles like this in Bloomberg or Wall Street Journal, uh, which I used to subscribe to for a long time, the Wall Street Journal, over 10 years or something? Uh, nationalism confront globalism in Glasgow, the lost lockdown months of uh, the uh, crisis, uh, Fed protected, hmm, uh, this is kind of interesting and actually quite scary. Uh, you got to wonder if that guy was actually a uh, agent for the Fed and if that was, those people that uh, got let in there uh, may have a good case to get them out of trouble here. Uh, crazy times though, man, I'm telling you, crazy, it's a bizarre world for sure. Uh, well, not much here in precious metals, you know I could make a comment on every one of these things. <laughs> Uh, however, you, I hope you do have ZH on your bookmark bar, along with uh, AIER on your bookmark bar. You read this stuff, you'll be much smarter. Uh, Seeking Alpha is another site that I like. They have the uh, markets right here. You can go look at this for free. Just go to Seeking Alpha, uh, hit that market page, and hit commodities, or, or I'm sorry, gold and silver and precious metals. And uh, they do uh, articles here on uh, updates, on opinions and stuff on gold and silver. And again, I believe this is free. Uh, I have uh, subscribed to the website. I plan on using it more and uh, kind of looking more into it when I get some time. Uh, so I am a subscriber, I gotta tell you that. And no, they don't pay my subscription. They don't know me from Shinola. So <laughs> they don't even know I'm talking about them. Uh, but again, I'm not, you know, I'll tell you the sites that I like to read. That's what I'm trying to share with you here. Uh, Ted Butler, Butler Research. Uh, uh, I told you I got a subscription to him. I'm not going to keep talking about him because some of you probably think I'm in love with the guy, but <laughs> and I, I really uh, in love with his research and I'm in love with what he's saying because uh, he's he's been nailing it for years and years. He's he's one of the guys out there that you should be listening to if you're uh, stacking gold and silver. He gets the uh, manipulation part. He can tell you who the players are, how they do it, and all this stuff. And this is why I like reading them. Uh, it's not speculation. It's not conspiracy. It's fact, folks. Uh, silver markets are heavily manipulated by four to eight banks, and uh, uh, you know, and, and the CFTC uh, turns a blind eye to it, and CME runs Comex, runs the casino, and they make a fortune off those big banks doing it, so they don't say anything. So they're all complicit in this crime for sure. Um, but Ted Butler points that out, and he, say, he nails it exactly. I brought it up in uh, the WSS uh, uh, forum the other day. And where is that? It received a little bit of traction here. But what I would have liked to have seen is the Wall Street silver guys, the people, the moderators. Um, if, you know, if I was a moderator and get a hold of moderator, maybe I will if I get some time here. But what they really, and I posted this out here, you saw this yesterday. Um, I was suggesting that the Wall Street silver moderators and people that run that site, you know, if they really did it professionally, they, they talked to Ted Butler and said, hey, write us a script. Let's, uh, let's have our members call. You know, get all our members, you know, and, and then they go out to their membership and say, hey, members, uh, Wall Street silver, uh, uh, silver apes, all you silver apes out there, please politely call your legislators and call the CFTC, uh, CME, um, and uh, whomever they, they deem that is important uh, and explain to them that their market practices by allowing these four to eight uh, central uh, commercial banks to dominate the entire silver market has hurt millions and millions of small gold and silver investors. Now, this is the important part that, that people are gonna forget is that, oh, well, can they, you know, is the CME allowed to, is it legal for them to uh, 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 give an advantage to the commercial banks and let, it is to some degree, folks. Yeah, of course it is. You can give advantage to bigger customers, but not when it comes to fucking the small guy. And that's exactly what they do is there's a lot of people out there that invest in silver for either uh, investment purposes or they invest in silver for uh, 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 commercial purposes to build stuff. Um, well, they're not, they're not gonna be unhappy about the price being low, but investors out there, lots of investors that, have, that buy silver for uh, 
uh, investing in, the small investors, the mom and pops, you silver apes out there that are listening, all you silver stackers. You guys have been screwed by these four to eight positions, screwed literally, like in a criminal way, okay? So it is criminal, it absolutely is. It just, uh, you need to, uh, the WSS needs to have someone like Ted Butler carefully construct a nice letter or somebody along those lines and uh, have your members have the Wall Street silver, silver apes. You know, you get 100,000 of them start calling these people, they'll start to pay attention. And the news media will pay attention even more. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, I'm not sure why uh, the Wall Street uh, uh, silver uh, forum uh, moderators haven't really said, hey, let's do this. I mean, it, 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 I would. It's, it's good for, it'll bring a lot more members into the fold. Uh, it'll also increase the, the knowledge of how these markets are controlled. Um, and getting people to call politely will make a change, believe me. Uh, meanwhile, you know, encouraging people just to go out and buy overpriced, uh, and I, again, I'm not making a, it's not a bad thing, but, you know, I see a lot of new product out there. I see people buying expensive, high premium silver, and, and it's really cool. I think that's really cool, but the, the, the Wall Street silver uh, uh, form has evolved into a potential game changer, you know, with the numbers and the numbers that they have. They could really make significant changes, positive changes. And for all the people that, that are on their forum, not for the big guys, the positive change they could make is to get rid of those uh, manipulative uh, uh, short positions by using the power of the membership of Wall Street Silver uh, to get that to happen. Uh, I hope someone's listening over there. I'd certainly like to help make that happen. I'd donate money to help that happen. I'd donate money to help Ted Butler write a nice little script for you guys to put online. Uh, listen, uh, uh, I think it's really important. I think the Wall Street Silver, unless you want to just end up being a forum that people post what they ate for food, you know, ate for lunch the other day, uh, that you have the ability to uh, really be a game changer out there and a positive one for silver stackers and silver apes. Uh, again, my opinion, uh, please, as someone, uh, f if you're watching this and you're a Wall Street Silver person, uh, forward this to the uh, moderators or, or make comments of this yourself, please. I think this is a very important time and uh, Wall Street Silver, uh, has a great opportunity at this, at this time and stage in history to make a significant, important, and positive change to all the people that they, they uh, you know, that are on their site. Well, that's pretty much my opinion. And we're gonna move out of here into uh, yesterday's video, $3,000 gold in three months. Um, the, uh, <laughs> we added the three months in there, and that was my fault. I, I, I kind of uh, thought I read that it said three months, and it kind of did in some way. Uh, the $3,000 gold in three months, $3,000 gold in, uh, in, in whatever, was a, uh, uh, a, a click, a, thumb, a thumbnail that I wanted to use to get people to click the uh, site, because I've been saying it over and over, is you can have the greatest content in the world. You can have you know, groundbreaking content that makes people you know, 10 times smarter just by listening. Uh, uh, and if you can't get them to click uh, your, 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 your video, you, it, it goes on deaf ears. So what I have noticed about maybe a lot of the internet, but, uh, and even the news does it, even the freaking news does it, even the corporate news does it now, they make these titles that you need to click on so you read the rest of the article. So I'm kind of stuck in that situation a little bit, folks, too. If I put just a, uh, a title that's uh, dead correct but not, uh, <laughs> not exciting, uh, we're not going to get new viewers out here. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to get new customers. So uh, I've got to kind of put titles out there that get people to click the uh, videos in order for me to get people to watch what I consider good content here. So that's the reason for the 3,000 gold in three months. And also it was, uh, and I didn't just put that in there and not talk about it. There is a good long article that was written by Tyler Durden from ZH that talks about $3,000 gold uh, in months, okay? And uh, it was a good article if you saw it in yesterday's video. If you watch the whole video, you know that the uh, title was completely correct and uh, spot on to uh, uh, what the uh, topic of the conversation was. And uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, comments out here, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching. It looks like our views are going up and our subscriptions are going up quite a bit too. Uh, and I'm telling you, I got to tell you, I got to be honest with you, it's because I've been kind of making the, uh, I don't want to say sexy, but I've been making the thumbnails and the uh, titles a little more sexy. However, I'm working hard to make sure that they do stay true to the uh, topic for sure. 
Uh, thanks for watching everyone on here. A.C. Taylor says, if space travel and exploration becomes an actual industry, gold will become more used in metal in, the, in that industry. It's the most practical, practical for shielding from radiation. It doesn't corrode or break down in space, so it is very important for electrical components. The visor on a space helmet that is used when exposed to the sun is coated as gold as well. Still a couple decades away at the very least, but something for the 40 under crowd to consider. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%, A.C. Taylor. Thanks for that very astute comment. And, uh, and actually, that was a very popular comment here. Let me another sip of coffee, don't mind me. Hmm. Brian Peterson responded, also when there's zero room for errors in underwater exploration, the key electrical component are comprised of gold because it conducts electricity and does not corrode or fail when everything else is on the line. Uh, yeah, that's a good topic. We talked about, uh, in the video yesterday, I was talking about how much silver is used in electronics, and I've been talking about that for a long time, actually, though, and how much uh, silver is used in uh, 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 missiles and war stuff and uh, space stuff uh, uh, because it doesn't corrode. Silver, silver does corrode over time. Uh, gold, what they usually do is they use silver and then they gold plate the uh, silver contacts. Uh, my understanding is to keep the corrosion down. Uh, gold and silver will both be needed, uh, says William. Tim Gibbs says, I hope not. You know how politicians only tell the truth after they leave office. The last thing Dole said we should have parked NASA after the moon landing. <laughs> uh, thanks for commenting, Tim. Uh, William Fender says it's mostly gold-plated. Uh, well, anyway, good topic there, uh, and I'm glad we kind of touched on it. Got some people to thinking. And uh, hi from uh, Great Britain. Hey, UK. Oh, man, I feel for you guys out there. I thought our politicians and uh, officials were boneheads. Uh, you guys, gosh, man, you got it just as bad. Uh, I won't say worse, but just as bad. Uh, Michael, at least uh, in, in the United States, I guess you got areas like this, uh, you know, little territories, but in the U.S., the whole United States hasn't gone to shit. Uh, most of it has, except for Texas and Florida, it looks like. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, watching. And Michael Rodriguez, uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Good to see you post. Uh, bread will be, if silver is 30, 300, 3,000 bucks an ounce, um, well, bread will be two, $20. I don't think so, not quite yet, but you know, if we start to see gold move into that $7,000, $10,000 range, yeah, for sure, Paul, that's kind of my thinking. Uh, but yeah, you're right, bread, you know, everything is on the up and up, uh, on the up and up. Everything is going up, including bread, uh, gold, bread, you name it. Uh, Mark says, uh, Fed ger ger Germo Powell and key banks will make f for sure gold, silver crash next week. I don't know, let's see, uh, that's, that's tough to say. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, news is coming up. Fed talk, uh, Fed job owning is coming up this weekend. So let's see what the Fed does with the markets. I think the housing uh, uh, stats came out today or something like the shill index. So it uh, didn't appear to knock my metals too much. And uh, uh, I'll be happy with $2,500. Yes, yes, lucky, uh, lucky, lucky. Yep, absolutely. Uh, $3,000 gold in uh, three months. Uh, what about a new gold standard to make it 10000 even better? Uh, you know, the 3,000, John, uh, thanks for commenting. I appreciate that. And uh, I don't know, I don't think we're ever going to go on a gold standard. I really don't. Uh, you know, I believe and China is working on some kind of gold back, something I'm told that's in the back works. Uh, meanwhile, the United States is probably talking about uh, uh, going to a cashless crypto type society. Uh, this way, uh, the, you'll have no privacy ever again. And, uh, but I don't see the uh, Western countries going on a gold standard, uh, not in my lifetime. They like the credit system too much. They like fiat too much. They like being able to print endlessly too much. That's the reason I don't see that happening. Thanks for watching, John. Uh, absolutely. So you're going to buy gold in three months for 3K. See you then. Uh, no, if you read the article, you'll know uh, I didn't say that at all, sir <laughs> or ma'am. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, we were kind of quoting an article that says that we could see gold in $3,000 in a few months because of the, uh, you know, black swan events and the potential of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uber inflation coming up. So, yeah, re uh, go ahead and uh, fast forward to the parts you don't like in the video yesterday and uh, watch uh, uh, what I did say, and you'll see that I uh, no, didn't exactly say that. Hey, thanks for watching uh, you, Google. appreciate that. Uh, Mark, always enjoy your content and appreciate you watching as well. And once people realize exactly what's happening to the money, you'd think they'd run to metals. Uh, no, they'll do it later, though. You know what happens is it's, it's crowd-driven. It's, people will follow the crowds. It's like the old, you know, lemmings, you know, uh, uh, you know, chasing the lemmings off a cliff or whatever it is. You know, they all follow each other. It's a vast majority of people out there follow each other. They, you know, fear of missing out, FOMO, um, following the crowd. That's so typical. And it, it's, 
it's even more so today than it ever has been. So that's kind of what you're seeing out there, Mark, just people following the crowd in fear of missing out. Uh, RD says, I don't really think it's necessary to peg a price to any of precious metals. What is important is that you buy insurance they offer. Very true. Uh, this is about uh, wealth preservation, wealth insurance, because the long-term trend of devaluing fiat is intact and nothing has changed. Uh, and absolutely correct there as well. Uh, all fiat currencies fail. True. We talk about that all the time. The devaluation of fiat money supply in multiple ways is, is out in the open to all to see. Very true as well. Uh, most of it. You can't actually see exactly what the Fed, all the assets they have, and what exactly what they've been spending on, but most of it. Uh, add whatever else you want to these two truths are hard facts and they cannot be debated. Therefore, it is only basic common sense to limit fiat held and buy hard assets like silver and gold. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, commenting, RD, and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, silver Loving Lou, nice to see you there. Thank you. Uh, Cladley or Monk, Arcadia Economics has a page of proof of who they call. Uh, that's good. I'm glad somebody out there is doing that in the uh, YouTube world. Uh, but as I said, I don't think there's any more, more there's, there's no more powerful silver ape out there than Wall Street silver. If, if, if we can get, or if, if they take the time and effort to, to cohesively get their group to start calling congressmen, CFTC, and again, politely with the correct kind of script, that would be so powerful you wouldn't believe it. Uh, boy, I hope they're listening. Alex Freestead says, if we mine an asteroid, you could bring back a couple tons of gold at the most. Uh, it would probably cost more to mine. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. You know, I always hear, well, gold, it's all over the universe, man. Even if it's made by colliding neutron stars, there's still a lot of it out there. Yeah, but try to go get it. It's expensive. Look how much it costs just to send something up and bring it back. Uh, way more than the price of gold. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's about the same now. Uh, price of gold will cre increase if needed based on supply and demand. And uh, yep, true. Thanks for commenting, Alex. Uh, Nick says gold is at a 10 trillion market. We need to need 5 trillion coming in to shift it to a 3K. Not saying it won't happen, but sentiment would have to radically shift from where it is today. Well, that's the thing is when the crowd moves, Nick, I mean, there's so little money in, in precious metals. Gold and silver does, gets less than 1% of the, all that Wall Street money, probably 1% of 1%. Can you imagine if 1% or 2% of Wall Street money moved into gold and silver? It would just be, uh, uh, it would be a game changer. Thanks for watching, Nick. High Kick says, isn't gold one of the most centralized assets on the planet? Um, gold and silver will go when the bankers are ready unless there's some accident you think will happen. Uh, gold and silver will go when the bankers are happening. I don't know. There's only so much manipulation they can do. And, you know, you can, hey, listen, would they, they'd still rather have it at a thousand bucks an ounce and it ain't there, man. So, you know, they can do so much to keep it down. It still is a international market and there still is a lot of players out there to determine the price besides the, the uh, central banks, which, again, if you read the GATA, uh, they do control it for sure. Uh, haven't missed an installment. Thank you very much, Ham. Up 70, Ham up 78. Um, I'm sorry you don't live close to me as well. I'd love to be able to be your local coin store. And uh, D. Sardis says, I think things will get bad, especially for China. They'll have to reprice gold. They can wipe out most of the debt on their balance sheet by repricing gold to forty to 60000 That would put silver at seven, eight hundred. dollars <laughs> well, Yeah, that's true. That, that is true. But again, as someone mentioned earlier, a loaf of bread is going to be 40 bucks by that point if they do kind of repricing. Uh, I think China couldn't reprice it on their own. They'd have to have the world behind them or all the central bankers behind them repricing it all. It'd have to be done on a larger scale. Maybe. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. The money would kind of leave China, or, or all the gold would end up in China uh, unless the uh, 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 dollars were, you know, I don't, tough to say. Uh, thanks for commenting, and I'll wrap my head around that comment later. <laughs> William says, uh, silver is absolutely best conductor for electricity. Uh, yeah, yeah, boy, it was kind of a good topic to talk about, gold and silver used in the industry and how it's used and uh, its uh, conductivity and stuff like that. Thanks for uh, commenting, William. I really appreciate that. And, uh, hey, that really covers it for today, folks. Uh, who am I? I'm Brian Kuzmar. I've been doing this, uh, uh, I'm second generation. I've been doing this since 1977. Started working for my father. My father was a dealer before that. I spent a lot of time in coin shops when I was a little kid. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to retail and wholesale precious metals. Uh, and I'm learning like you are about graphs and I'm learning about all the other stuff going on in the background that people like Ted Butler teach me and you and God and all that. So uh, um, I've got experience in buying, selling physical precious metals, but not online stuff. Uh, and I am an online dealer only. I advertise to be at Max JM and SD Bullion. So uh, and I can beat them in a couple ways, not just their price, but I can also beat them in uh, uh, giving good advice and personal service because uh, it's tough for them to do that. Not saying anything bad about those companies, but uh, I can offer a lot of things that they can't. 
And my recommendation, if you don't live near me, because I don't deal over the phone or through uh, the mail, uh, that you find yourself a good local coin store like myself. Uh, maybe they're not as handsome, me or, handsome as me or talk well as uh, I do, but uh, there's a lot of good people out there. Find yourself a good local dealer. And that's not, not just for coins and precious metals. That's for tires. That's for jewelry. Uh, try to keep that money local, folks. I can't tell you how important it is keeping money local and not shipping it out of your state. It is very important. Uh, and one of the nice things about Florida, too, is there's no sales tax down here. So that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar, and finish up another uh, show today. And uh, hey, check back in with tomorrow, and thanks, and have yourself a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye now.